Welcome, Curious Minds, and thank you for joining us for another deep dive. Great to be here. Today, we're plunging into a, a really cutting edge area of 3D content creation, stuff that looks set to pretty much revolutionize how we build digital worlds, digital objects. Yeah, it's moving fast. Our mission today is to unpack a fascinating new technology. It focuses on, well, generating 3D models with distinct parts, all from just a single image. Which is a huge leap. Absolutely. Think game development, robotics. It's a potential game changer. We should find some surprising facts, hopefully a few aha moments for you. Definitely. Okay, let's dive into the core problem. When we generate 3D objects right now, characters, cars, whatever, hmm. what's the main headache for creators, especially if they want to, say, edit bits and pieces? Right. So the big thing is that most current methods, they tend to output the object as just one solid fuse shape. Like a single block of data? Exactly. Think of a 3D model of a car that's just yeah. one continuous mesh mm -hmm. or a character where the arms are sort of permanently welded to the torso. Okay, fine for looking at, I guess. <laughs> sure, for just viewing, it might be okay. But if you as a creator want to maybe detach a car wheel for an animation or, you know, pose an arm independently, it becomes incredibly difficult. Why is that? Because the underlying system, the AI model, doesn't really understand the distinct parts. It doesn't see a wheel or an arm in separate things. Especially tricky are those areas where parts meet or overlap. They just tend to merge together. And all that separate information is lost. Precisely. Plus, there's another challenge. Most AI models like to output data that's a fixed size, mm -hmm. a consistent length. Generating a variable number of parts, sometimes five, sometimes 15, that's tough for these fixed output models. Right. You can't easily tell a machine built to make exactly 10 widgets to suddenly make seven or 12. Yeah. So given these hurdles, how did researchers even start tackling this, getting a model to see separate parts? Yeah, that's the key question. How do you handle individual parts with a fixed output design? The breakthrough really was this insight about how parts connect in the real world. They realized that for many objects, you can actually group the parts pretty effectively into just two sets. Think of it like coloring a map or a graph. Mm -hmm. You assign parts to one of two colors, let's say group A or group B, such that no two parts that actually touch each other are in the same group. Ah, uh, I see. So if the arm touches the torso, they have to be in different groups. Exactly. But an arm and a leg, if they don't touch, they could potentially be in the same group. Okay. So parts that don't touch can then be conceptually packed into the same sort of container or, as they call it, volume. And this is where dual volume packing comes in. Two volumes, two groups. Precisely. By using two distinct volumes, two separate channels, they found a really clever way to keep those contacting parts separate. They don't fuse together during generation. That is clever because you're putting, say, all the group A parts in volume one and all the group B parts in volume two. You got it. And the beauty is... This solves the merging problem, and it keeps the total output size fixed for the model. Yeah. You always have two volumes, regardless of the number of parts within them. It's efficient. So you don't need a different model structure if you're generating a chair versus, I don't know, an octopus. Well, within limits, yeah. It makes the approach much more generalizable and efficient. Okay, so connecting this to the bigger picture. Yeah. What does this actually mean in practice? What can we now do? What it means is you can generate pretty high quality 3D meshes mm -hmm. directly from one input image. And importantly, these meshes have explicit separable parts built right in. Like building blocks. Kind of. Imagine taking a photo of a cactus and getting a 3D model where you can easily select and maybe you know edit each individual arm or segment. Or getting a SpongeBob model where every limb is distinct, ready for animation. Or a car model where the wheels, doors, body, they're all separate components from the get-go. Exactly. The system understands and segments these parts during the generation process itself. And you mentioned speed. How fast are we talking? Because traditional 3D modeling can be slow. Right. Some older generative methods might take several minutes, and often the time increases the more parts you have. This new approach, we're talking around 30 seconds. 30 seconds for a complete multi-part object from a single image. Roughly, yeah. And critically, that time is largely independent of how many parts the object has or how yeah. complex it is. Wow. That is, that's a huge leap for creators, designers, game developers. The time saving is immense. Imagine getting instantly editable assets like that. It really could streamline workflows dramatically. Okay, it sounds amazing, but there have to be some catches, right? What are the limitations or challenges right now? Oh, definitely. It's promising, 
but not perfect. Yeah. One issue is that the system currently relies on existing data about how objects are typically broken down into parts, what we might call scene graph information. And that data isn't always perfect. Exactly. It can be inconsistent or noisy. So sometimes the part divisions the model makes can be a bit unpredictable. You might get, say, a wheel fusing unexpectedly with the car body, or a part might split in a weird way. The segmentation isn't always stable yet. Okay, so the input data quality is a factor. What about the dual volume approach itself? Any inherent limits there? Yes, that's a good point. The two volume system works great for most cases, but it does have a theoretical limitation. It can't perfectly handle situations where you have, say, three different parts all touching each other at the exact same point or region. Ah, because you'd need a third color or volume for that specific case, and the model only has two. Precisely. It's a constraint of the method. So complex intersections like that can still be a challenge. So stepping back, what does this all mean for you, the listener? Maybe you're an innovator, a developer, an artist. What's the takeaway? I think it shows the direction things are heading. The next frontier really seems to be about giving creators even more fine-grained control, handling these more intricate part relationships, and just making digital content creation faster, more intuitive, and much more editable. Yeah, moving beyond static blobs to truly dynamic, manipulable digital objects generated almost instantly. It's exciting stuff. Definitely. Well, this deep dive into part-level 3D generation, I think it really highlights that exciting future for editable digital content and much smoother creation workflows. We hope you gain some valuable insights today. Hope it sparks some ideas. Thank you for joining us on the deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring.